logic board is there. That looks lovely. This looks like crap. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. G'day people. Welcome back to the lab. We're going to go through how to remove an EEPROM chip from a printed circuit board today. A lot of people screw this up. So we're going to show you how to do this quickly and safely and not thermally stress the EEPROM when taking it off the board. We are going to use the two iron technique for taking the EEPROM off the board today using leaded or unleaded solder. But if you want to learn how to remove the EEPROM using ultra low melt solder or chip quick, we'll leave a description down below when we film that. Otherwise, let's get started. We're going to remove this uh, EEPROM chip off this old MacBook logic board. And we put a bit of scrap PCB up the back here to push a chip off onto. Um, this chip is a SOIC package, but this technique will work with the TSOP package as well. And what we'll be doing is we'll be applying solder, leaded solder to both rows of pins and then getting them uh, nice and molten on either side with the two irons and then just pushing off onto the board. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, get rolling on that. We'll flood this side with some solder. Fit it in nice and fast. And just get all those legs. And we're going to do the other side as well. Feed him in nice and quickly. Get that bead to form. We basically want to cover all legs on both sides. And we have our two irons here. These are two beveled irons. The one on this side is a three millimeter beveled iron. And the one on the left is a five millimeter beveled iron nice and large and they carry a lot of thermal mass and these irons are set for 370 degrees celsius or in the old money 700 degrees fahrenheit and what we're going to do is we're going to apply both irons on either side wait for those beads to melt and then push the chip off And it's as easy as that. Next, what we'll do is we'll clean up the board and we'll get rid of all this excess solder. Use a nice wide wick for this. We just apply the wick here over the pads. And then we go on the other side. Clean this one up as well. Suck up all that excess solder. Lovely. Apply some alcohol, isopropylene. And we just need to get in with some technical wipes and clean that area of the board. Get rid of all excess flux. And our pads are clean for the new chip or whatever the case to be reapplied to the board. Now it's time to clean up our chip. So we just flip him over. And we'll just put something heavy on the other side to weight it down. We don't want the chip sliding everywhere. Clean all the, the excess solder off the legs. Give each leg a bit of a dab. Then we spin our chip around, a little EEPROM chip. And put him against our little weight there. 
again we go in with our little three mil bevel clean those legs up dab each leg and if we have a look our chip is all clean that little EEPROM chip and it can go uh, straight into a little uh, programmer and you can program that little EEPROM chip up and then you can uh, mount that back on the uh, the printed circuit board and we'll go through that now it's time to put it back onto the board so we just drop down a little bit of flux not too much, just a little bit. You don't want to go too overboard. And flux just helps the solder flow quite nicely. You can drop your EEPROM back on the board. Then you just align your EEPROM to make sure all the pads on the pins. We're just using a pointed soldering iron for this that looks like it's lined up and we just start in one corner make sure you got the orientation of your chip correct whichever way it goes around and you're probably asking what does an EEPROM do in the first place an EEPROM is a this is a small basic memory chip that all devices have TVs computers, car dashes, and it just carries a tiny, about, a tiny uh, amount of information to basically tell the device um, basic things such as language to operate in, the serial number of the device. Um, you know, if you're looking at uh, a speedo or instrument cluster, it's the odometer settings. And the odometer readings just a small repository for information and we've just done our first pin there so what we'll do is we'll do the other pins right down that row there we go one done the next one done a small bridge that happens We'll clean that up in a moment. It's what happens when I talk and solder at the same time. Bridges can happen from time to time. Just got to go in there with the iron, suck up a little bit of excess solder, and our little bridge is fixed. Let's check each leg on that side. That's excellent. And the best thing to do is we need, we'll rotate the whole job 180 degrees because I'm a right-hander. And we'll just finish off the legs on the other side. That's one. That's the next one. There we go. All legs are soldered. Just give it a quick tap. Lovely. All done. Not too hard, not too overly complicated. We got the EEPROM off without thermally stressing it. So, um, yeah, that's how you take an EEPROM off safely using the two iron technique. And then, uh, you know, you go through the reprogramming process. And that could be done for a number of legitimate reason, reasons. You may want to change a, um, a Japanese dash to an English dash, or you might, might have had the EEPROM go on a MacBook or something, and it's gone corrupt. Or maybe uh, your EEPROM's, EEPROM's gone corrupt in your washing machine or, or TV, whatever the case. And sometimes EEPROMs need to be flipped out. And we really want to change them out without thermally stressing them. Because if you stuff up the EEPROM, you will most likely uh, render the appliance or whatever it is uh, useless. After it's cool, we'll hit it with a bit of alcohol. Get 
get Mr. Toothbrush in, clean him up a little bit. A little bit of air to evaporate. And it's all done. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the content, subscribe and share. Don't forget to check out our social media. Other than that, we will see you next time in the lab.